In this lesson, we're going to go over an introduction to statistics, which is our new subject. Uh, so the first thing I want to go over when we're talking about statistics. Statistics is basically the way that we represent data. And we basically are trying to represent data in a way that makes it easier for us to understand and for us to interpret that data so we can get a good understanding of what the data is actually trying to tell us. So that is the purpose of statistics. Now, when we are talking about data, I want to go over two main types of data that you will be dealing with in grade 10. And the first is quantitative data. Quantitative data is data that can be represented numerically. So this is going to be things like height, um, like weight. These are all things that we can represent by actual numbers. Or even if we were talking about the number of people in a certain classroom, that is all quantitative data because we can represent that data using numbers. Our other type of data is going to be qualitative data. And qualitative data is data that cannot be represented by numbers. So that's going to be things like the favorite colors of students in a classroom or the languages that are spoken by students. Those are things that we cannot represent um, using numbers alone. And so that is qualitative data. So these are the two main types of data that you're going to be dealing with. And um, another thing that I want to go over is just the difference between discrete and continuous data. So what is discrete data? Discrete and continuous are two things that you're going to be seeing quite often. So discrete data is data that can only take on certain values. Or in other words, it can only take on a fixed number of values. So an example of that is, let's say we were trying to uh, represent the number of friends a person has. We can only have, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, up to infinity, but we can't have something like 3.4 friends. So that is an example of discrete data because that data set is fixed uh, based on the values that it can take on. Then we have continuous data. And continuous data is data that can take on any value. So the possibilities for that data set are on a continuum. So for example, if we are talking about height, um, or even weight. These are examples of continuous data because the height of a person is not just 160, 161, 162, and so on. It can be anything in between. It can be 161.1 centimeters, 161.115 centimeters, and so on. So the, the values that these uh, these can take on are essentially endless. It can be anything on a continuum. So that is um, an example of continuous data. And usually when we are dealing with continuous data sets, we tend to group um, these data sets together. So for example, if we are talking about the number of students of a certain height, we are more likely to represent that by counting the number of students that have heights between a certain range. So 160 to 169 centimeters, and then we'll have our number of students in that range. And then we can have 170 to 179 centimeters. And that is again, because we could have students here with 160.5, 160.005, 163.857, and so it makes more sense to group this type of data into ranges and that is how we can represent that. So that is basically our difference between discrete data and continuous data. With our discrete data, it is going to have fixed values that it can take on, like the number of students in a class. And continuous data can take on essentially any value. Now one other thing that I want to discuss in this intro video is the concept of qualitative data being represented quantitatively. 
So I'd mentioned earlier in this video that with qualitative data, this is data that cannot be represented by numbers. So things like your favorite colors or the languages you speak, those are generally represented by words and not by numbers. So let's say in this case we have a qualitative data set and that is the favorite colors of students in a class. So let's say we have 10 students here. Student 1 says their favorite color is black. Student 2's favorite color is brown. Student 3's favorite color is orange. Student 4's favorite color is black. Student 5's favorite color is green. Student 6's favorite color is purple. Student 7's favorite color is green. Student 8's favorite color is brown. Student 9's favorite color is green. And student 10's favorite color is orange. So of our 10 students in the class, these are all of their favorite colors. So this is again an example of a qualitative data set. We cannot represent these colors themselves by numbers. But what we can do is we can take this qualitative data and represent it in a quantitative manner. So for example, we can represent this in a different way by saying we have certain colors and then we have the number of students in the class who have that favorite color. So our colors that we had were black, then we had brown, we had green, we had orange, and we had purple. So these are our categories of our colors, and now we're going to write down the number of students who had these favorite colors. So for black, we had two students with the favorite color of black. For brown, we had two students with the favorite color of brown. For green, we had one, two, three students with the favorite color of green. For orange, we had one, two people with the favorite color of orange. And we had one student with the favorite color of purple. And now we have taken this qualitative data set and we have represented it in a quantitative manner. We have basically taken these categories of our colors and we've put the number of students that have a favorite color in each of these categories. So the point of this is to say that just because you have a qualitative data set, that doesn't mean that you can't represent that qualitative data in a quantitative way. And that is useful in that you can go on to then graph that data. So that's just a note for, um, for the difference between qualitative and quantitative data. So that is it for our introduction into statistics. And in the next lesson, we're gonna take a look at different ways that we can describe data. For example, how we can describe the central tendency of data.